All right, in this recording, I'm going to talk about compound functions. And what a compound function is, is just kind of like what it sounds. It's taking two functions and making one function out of them. And sometimes we call them compound functions, and other time we call them a composition of functions. So, for example, if I give you f of x is equal to 2x, I give a second function g of x is equal to x plus 1, I could write a composition of functions and put f and g together. So, let's say bullet point 1. Let's say I want g of f of x. Another way I write that is saying g with an open little circle of f of x. And for both of these, g is defined as x plus 1, where x is my input, and f of x is 2. So if I'm putting get rid of this. If I'm putting 2 of x in for f of x, what I have is g of f of x. But if 2x is my input and my function g is defined as whatever the input is plus 1, I know that I would really have 2x plus 1 for my composition of the two functions. If I give f of g, which is the same as writing f of little open circle g, then I would have f of g of x is defined as x plus 1, and f is 2 times whatever the input is. So if the input is x plus 1, I have 2 times that input which gives me 2x plus 2. So you see there's a difference between g of f and f of g. I could also ask for a composition where I actually assign a value for x. So perhaps I say, what's g of f of 2? Well, then you start by taking f of 2 and then doing g of all of that number. So if I do f of 2, f was defined as 2 times my input. And if my input is 2, I have 2 times 2, which is 4. So now what I'm really doing is g of 4. And if 4 is my input in g, I have 4 plus 1, which will give me an answer of 5. So that's all there is to composition of functions. Now sometimes it gets a little lengthier because we have more than two functions. So let's say f of x is given by x minus 1. g of x is given by 1 half of x and h of x is given by x plus 3 over 5. And then the question we have to solve, let's say, is what is h of g of f of 3? So first, I know that f of 3 if 3 is my input, my function tells me I take the input and minus 1, and I'd get 3 minus 1, which is 2. And then I would take g of 2, and if 2 is my input, I have to take 1 half of my input, 
which is equal to 1. And then finally, we just need to solve for h of 1. And if h is defined as this function, if 1 is my input value, I'd have 1 plus 3 over 5, which is 4 over 5. So ultimately, h of g of f is equal to 3. And again, I could write this the same way as writing g open circle f and h open circle of that of x. So you see, you always work from the inside and work out, outwards. You start with the f, then you move on to the g of that, and then you move on to h of that. For a second one, let's say I want g of h of f when x is equal to, or let's just keep x. So I'm not assigning a value for x this time. I just want to know what g of h of f of x would be. So first of all, I know f of x is just x minus 1. So in the inside stuff, I'll have h of x minus 1 as my input of h now. And then h of an input is equal to the input plus 3 divided by 5. So I have g of x minus 1 plus 3 over 5, which simplifies to g of x plus 2 over 5, because minus 1 plus 3 is 2. And now this is my new input that I put into g. And g is defined as 1 half of the input. So I know that I have to do 1 half of all of this stuff. And multiplying that through, I get x plus 2 over 10. So now, if I wanted to do g of h of f of, of let's say, 3, if I already know what g of h of f is defined as, then I can just plug in 3 right here and get 3 plus 2 over 10, which is 5 over 10, which is 1 half. So the answer for this would be 1 half. And that's all there is to composition of functions. So for practice, given m of x is equal to 2x plus 3, p of x is equal to 1 fourth x, and q of x is equal to x squared minus 1, solve p of m of q when x is 4, and solve q of p of m when x is equal to minus 3. So pause the recording and then get your solutions and then when you're ready to compare with mine, you can play back. So by this point, hopefully you've gotten your solutions and I'm going to go ahead and do mine out. I first start with the innermost stuff. Q of 4, well Q is defined as our input squared minus 1. So if our input is 4, I'd have 4 squared minus 1. And then I need to take m of that, and then p of all of that stuff. So simplifying, I would have 4 squared is 16, and 16 minus 1 is 15. And now I need to do m, where the function m, where my input is 15. And function m is 2 times my input, plus 3. 
So here I have 2 times 15 plus 3, and then I'll need to take P of that. And simplifying gives me 30 plus 3 is 33. So last, I just need to take the function P when my x value is 33. And P is defined as 1 fourth of the input. So I will have 1 fourth of 33 to get an answer of 33 over 4. And then for number two, I'm going to do a similar kind of thing, but the order of my functions is a little different. So starting with m, m is 2 times my input plus 3. So I have 2 times negative 3 plus 3. And then I need to take p of that and then q of all of that. Well, 2 times negative 3 is minus 6, plus 3 is minus 3, so I need to do p of minus 3 and then take q of that. p is defined as 1 fourth of my input so I have q of minus 3 fourths because minus 3 times 1 fourth is minus 3 fourths and then q is my input squared minus 1. So I have my input squared and then I need to subtract 1 and minus 3 fourths squared is 9 sixteenths and when I subtract 1 that's the same as me subtracting 16 over 16 and 9 minus 16 is equal to minus 7 and I have minus 7 sixteenths and that's all there is to it